NBC's Gary Gumbrock is with us outside the courthouse in Atlanta and also joining us criminal defense attorney Danny Savalos and former federal prosecutor Temidayo Agenga Williams. So Gary, what are we learning from inside the court this morning, that hearing getting underway about 45 minutes ago? Yeah, the hearing is well underway now, and attorneys for both sides are briefing the court. It's really the worker reads inside. Jeffrey Clark is not here himself. He has waived his appearance. But as our legal analyst, Lisa Rubin, just pointed out to me, the burden here is on the defense to make this case. And the case has to be made in three different ways. One of them, that uh, Jeffrey Clark was a federal officer at this time. Nobody is disputing that. He worked for the Department of Justice first in the Environmental Division and then later in the Trump administration in the Civil Division. Second, this is is the controversial part. Is what he is being prosecuted for related to any act under the color of his job? Meaning, was what he was doing part of his job? The defense says yes, it was because he felt he was entitled and entailed to discuss the election, especially as it relates to what was happening here in Georgia. The DA's office is saying, no, you were part of the civil division of the DOJ. That is not specifically having to do with the election. And third is just that they have to make a legal case to this effect. They can't just say yes or no. It actually has to be a legally binding case. And uh, this is the second time that Judge Steve Jones is hearing a case like this, because Mark Meadows, the Trump's former chief of staff, went through this same process. And the outcome there was that Meadows did not get his case removed to federal court because of a very specific part of what Meadows was doing in his job. He was chief of, cha chief of staff at the White House, not chief of staff to the Trump campaign. And that is specifically related to what was happening with the election here in Georgia. There is going to be some help from both sides here. Former Attorney General Ed Meese uh, wrote a memo that he just put in the docket over the weekend in support of Jeffrey Clark removing to federal court. The DA's office, uh, for their part have Jody Hunt, who was the head of the civil division during the Trump administration, saying that no, in fact, they did not have to do with the election in that specific job. Anna. Okay, Gary Grumbach, thank you very much for your reporting. Timmy Dio, Judge Steve Jones, as Gary pointed out, already rejected a similar motion by Mark Meadows. So what would need to be different in Clark's case for this to go his way? So I think he's going to have to convince the judge that that distinction between the political activities and uh, the actual governmental activities were, was different for him. I don't think he's going to be successful here. I think what Judge Jones has said with Mark Meadows, which for many people thought had the strongest of the possible uh, cases for the 19 defendants, Judge Jones says, hey, when you're acting in, in favor of candidate Trump, that is separate from acting on behalf of the White House, on behalf of the U.S. government, of the people. And I think here, uh, Jeffrey Clark just clearly was not acting in his capacity as a DOJ official. I mean, we look at the, he want, he went outside of the DOJ chain of command, right? He was not acting with other White House uh, lawyers, DOJ lawyers. He was acting completely outside of that purview. He which, went rogue. He went rogue. That's exactly what he did. I mean, he was reprimanded by his superiors. He was reprimanded by the attorney general that you should not be contacting the White House directly. That's not how we do it. So on these calls, it's not the uh, White House lawyers that are there with these folks, for example, with the George to call. These are these are non-campaign lawyers. These are excuse me, non-DOJ lawyers, non-White House lawyers are supporting this effort that's charged. So I think when you scope in on him, I think the judge is going to say you really were acting to support a political candidate. And separately, a DOJ official cannot do that. I was a DOJ prosecutor. You were all taught you are not allowed to act in favor of a political candidate. Not allowed to take political actions. And that's what he was doing here. He was supporting the political actor that was. Trying Trump, not the president. So Mark Meadows' case is also working its way through the court system. He is appealing in order to try to get his case moved to federal court because the initial judge already rejected it. Same judge here that's hearing today the Clark case. So what will you be looking for in the brief expected to be filed by Meadows' team today, Danny? Mark Meadows' case and Clark's case, arguably, are on the ropes for staying in federal court, but it doesn't mean they're out yet. They still have a chance because this is a close call. Yes, Clark and Meadows have the burden here, but that burden is a pretty light burden in the world of burdens. It's not beyond a reasonable doubt. And all they have to show is that they have a colorable defense. It may be a silly defense. It may ultimately be an unsuccessful defense that their federal officership uh, it allows them or permits them to be in federal court. But they don't need to show that they're going to win with this defense at trial. It just needs to be 
plausible. Mm. And the Northern District of Georgia and the United States Supreme Court have even observed that the uh, federal officer authority, yes, you're right, is someone in the environmental division acting outside of their authority if they're getting involved in elections? Absolutely. But courts have said that the federal officer removal statute applies even where that officer acts outside of his or her authority. So it's a thorny mm. question that is yet to be resolved. Yes, is Meadows, if you were laying odds, would you say that Meadows will stay in state court? Yes, probably, but it's on appeal. Clark today will probably ultimately meet the same fate in district court because it's almost the same decision, slightly different. Right, Meadows right. is arguably not certainly a federal officer. Jeffrey Clark is 100% a federal officer, but it's a distinction without a difference. Okay. They'll probably lose at district court, but on appeal, they may have a shot. I want to get to a couple of other uh, developments that we've seen in the last few days over the weekend. People have been, you know, probably not paying as close of attention. Timidayo, we now know that the prosecution, Jeffrey, or sorry, the special counsel Jack Smith's team is asking for Judge Chutkin in the federal election interference case to issue a narrow gag order for Donald Trump. And she writes, they write, quote, it an order that restricts the 2024 presidential candidate from making certain extrajudicial statements about the election interference case brought against him. So, Temedaya, what kinds of statements would that now affect? And do you think a gag order is necessary? Well, I think what's important here is uh, the special counsel really laid the factual underpinning for this request. They pointed specific statements that the former president has made that are effectively threatening witnesses, uh, trying to impact the jury pool, basically trying to have a trial by media as opposed to a trial by his peers. So that's the basis here. And he has a right to comment on his case. He has a right to profess his, his innocence. What he doesn't have a right to do is basically try to impact a fair trial. Or fair and both the prosecutors and the defense have a right to be, have a fair trial before a jury. So what the special counsel is saying is judges, you don't get to threaten folks. You don't get to intimidate witnesses. You don't get to threaten effectively jurors, right? And we've seen evidence in other January 6 cases where jurors have been afraid that their names are going to get out and there'll be reprisals against them. So what they're asking for the judges, while respecting the former president's First Amendment rights, ask just for a limited curtailing of what he can say. He can't be threatening. He can't be intimidating. He can't otherwise try to impact this trial in the public sphere. What he can do is defend himself in the courtroom. Okay, let's turn to part of Kristen Welker's interview with Donald Trump, where he talks about his legal counsel's advice. Watch this. You called some of your outside lawyers. You said they had crazy theories. Why were you listening to them? Were you listening to them because they were telling you what you wanted to hear? You know who I listened to myself? I saw what happened. I watched that election, and I thought the election was over at 10 o'clock in the evening. Were you calling the shots, though, Mr. President, ultimately? Uh, as to whether or not I believed it was rigged? Oh, sure. I, okay. I, it was my decision. Danny, if you're Trump's defense lawyer, are you okay with that answer? Of course not. But part of the deal of being one of Trump's defense lawyers, especially now in 2023 as opposed to, say, 2016, is you know going into it that your client is going to say or do whatever he wants, no matter <laughs> what you advise him to do. In fact, I'd be willing to bet that in the retainer agreement is a paragraph, a relatively new paragraph, that exonerates defense counsel and says something to the effect of, we know you're going to go out there and say whatever. Our advice is not to talk to anyone. You proceed and disregard our advice at your own peril. So, I mean, if part of the job of being defense lawyer for Trump is knowing he's going to make extra judi judicial statements that will harm the case, Look, that's just the way it is. In reality, this happens all the time. I have no doubt that in your career you have listened to jailhouse phone calls that were recorded and added more evidence to someone who was already a defendant who thought they could do something that would help their case uh, work some kind of angle and end up damaging their case. Defendants do this all the time, but most of them are unsophisticated, don't know anything about the system. Donald Trump should know better. Maybe he does know better, but it doesn't seem to matter. He's going to go out there and say and do what he thinks helps his case. But so often with criminal defendants, they are a little misguided on that front. They only end up hurting themselves. Quick final thought. That's 100 percent right. And I guarantee you there's a prosecutor out there following every single word he's saying and finding how to use that in the case against him. Thank you.